Okay. Hi, Zach. Hi. Welcome to the Maltzabon rooftop. Thank you. I am excited to be here. Look yeah, you got you got a little buddy there. there. Huh? Are you gonna name the Nutcracker? Cool. Uh, I think Nutcracker is a good name for him. Nutcracker. Okay. I don't okay. wanna. I don't wanna change it. Oh, okay. I don't disrespect his background. I don't know what he's gone through. He has a personal story. Yeah. I don't want to, you know, uh, use my privilege against that. As well. Yeah. I mean, totally respect that. <laughs> totally respect that. Hashtag respect. Hashtag okay. Respect. So what do you feel is like, what does the cult cultural like impact that A Christmas Story has had mean to you? Like the pop culture phenomenon of this movie? What does it mean to me? It yeah. means that a movie that I did when I was 13 years of age has been playing uh, 24 hour marathons for the last 27 years and I'm 50 years old now <laughs> and there's a movie playing where I was 13 years old and people still love the film, which is crazy. So yeah, it's awesome. They get to look at your 13 year old face for and, 24 yeah, hours and straight. And those braces <laughs> are mine, so those are my braces. Awesome. So, what like led you to have that role in a Christmas story? Like ah, that's such an iconic it role. Is. Like, and, and it all happened by fluke. It was all a big uh, oopsie doodle. So my mom's an actress. I grew up in Toronto, Canada, um, being backstage and being on sets. And so I fell in love with acting, and I started acting when I was 10 years old. I started doing a bunch of commercials. I auditioned a lot more than I ever got to work. Uh, and then I auditioned for A Christmas Story, and it's what we call a cattle call, meaning 300 kids show up. Mm -hmm. And back in the day, 1982, um, there was this new technology called the VHS machine. Wow. Very, yeah, I know, very exciting. When cameras were only this big. Yeah. <laughs> So wow, we started simpler audition. times. Simpler <laughs> time. uh, it would make a good boat anchor. But uh, so I auditioned uh, for this role, uh, and actually, I, my role originally was not the bully. I was the sidekick. So I had wow. different lines. I said things like, uh, "Yeah, you're uh, nah, your aunt Tilly, get over here." Very little dialogue, and it went from 300 kids. I kept on getting callbacks, and it went 300, 200, 100, 50, 10. And I got a phone call that I got the job. That's exciting. Uh, but I didn't really know how to put that in my head as to what a movie would be like. And then I get to set, and I've gone through wardrobe, and I got the, the hat on with the tail and the clothing, and I meet Grover Dill. And he's about this tall to me back in the day. And so we get brought out to Bob Clark, the director, and the wardrobe mistress says, okay, here's your Scott Farkas, and here's your Grover Dill. And for the first time, I had never met the director before, so for the first time he sees me in my height disparity with Yano Anaya, who played Grover Dill, and he goes, oh, oh, um, you get his lines, he gets yours. So that changed <laughs> everything. Oh, wow. Just like that, just like that. And uh, so then we shot the movie, we did it over roughly five and a half, six weeks, and it was in Cleveland, uh, Ohio, and Toronto, Ontario, and St. Uh, uh, Catharines, Ontario. Wow. And it was all throughout the winter and it was a lot of fun and it kind of felt like going to summer school, I mean summer camp, but winter. Yeah. And it was a great time. So did would you what would you guys do offset? Uh one time we went to go visit Niagara Falls. Oh wow, and how you, was that? It was so cool. If you ever get a chance to go to Niagara Falls in the winter, it's amazing. A couple of reasons. There's no one there, which is super cool. <laughs> so you can get great rates on hotels, whatever. But the Niagara Falls, as the water's pounding down, there's a lot of mist, right? Mm -hmm. So all that water is going up in the air and creating icicles that are four feet wide and 15 feet long, and it looks like something out of Narnia. Wow. It's super cool. I bet that like just blew all of your guys' minds. Yeah, yeah that minds young blown. Day. It was incredibly fantastic. Um, and then we, we that was when we were off set. When we were on set, we were shooting in Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, Cleveland is a beautiful place, but back in 1983, 1982, uh, it was very repressed. Uh, it was, uh, there was a huge recession that went on, and the city was basically vacant. And the only people who were on the streets at night were homeless people. And they had a, th that city had a lot of problems, and if you see Cleveland now, it is gorgeous. And it's had this fantastic resurgence, but I remember it back when buildings were boarded up. So mm. the downtown area looked like something out of a zombie movie. Wow. It was so different. You could not be outside after 7 o'clock. 
That's crazy. I it's recently crazy. went to Cleveland and it's, it's nothing great, like right? that now. It's so great. Dude, and they're such a wonderful people. Uh, my my uh, oldest friend, Julius Moore, just lives in Akron, Ohio. And I've been going back and forth to Ohio for 20 something years, raising money for different charities and seeing people that I know and I work with there. Um, so that was our experience when we were kids. And to see that city make that comeback, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing. Oh, I'm sure. And what charities do you work with? I work with bully prevention programs and I work with the Boys and Girls Foundation. When I was a kid, um, I was raised by a single mom and she had to work. So at certain points after school, couldn't afford a babysitter. So I stayed at school with the Boys and Girls Foundation mm -hmm. and they would help me with my homework and do some sports in the gymnasium, whatever. But that was where I had a support system because we couldn't afford one. And yeah. so that's something I've always believed in that people need. Awesome, that sounds so great. So what other projects do you have co coming up or going on or currently in the makes of? Um, well, I'm directing a movie right now called Patsy Lee and the Keepers of the Five Kingdoms with James Hong. And you might Ooh. remember James Hong from uh, Big Trouble in Little China. He was the evil uh, Chinese wizard who did a, uh, the girl with the green eyes, right? Uh -huh. And he's also in Blade Runner. Um, iconic. Iconic. And he's 90 years old now. Even and more iconic. So iconic. And we're doing a movie that's basically The Goonies meets Big Trouble, but with magic, uh, Chinese magic. And Ooh. so, yeah, really mixing it, uh, mixing it up and bringing a new story value into place. It's a lot of fun. Awesome. That's awesome. And you'll premiere it here, right? Oh, At the yeah, Maltabon? Yes, absolutely. Of course. Of, of course. course. So thank you so much for doing this interview with us, hey, it's Zach. It's my pleasure. So he's going to go and meet some fans and sign some autographs and just hang out for a little bit. Swing on by if you're in town. Please, drop on by. Thank you so much, Zach. You got it.